Okay, so you just watched that documentary on Shay's Rebellion. I hope you get an opportunity to do some extra research on the side about that. I mean, that's that's uh, one exposure to it. But those are a wide variety of, of uh, good scholars that were also <clears throat> discussing the legacy of Shay's Rebellion. And the idea that that rebellion really sent the message that the Articles of Confederation were just not going to work out. And it made this idea that just having state militias was an inefficient way to deal with insurrections, okay, the, to suppress uprisings. And, um, you know, how that was going to, um, you, you know, what were they going to be able to do to create a stable, efficient system. So you have um, a first the Annapolis Convention in Maryland, 1786, um, called for by Alexander Hamilton. Um, he was an ally of James Madison of Virginia. Only five states came, um, called for a convention in Philadelphia a year later. And then we have the convention. Now, um, many of us, I mean, I think, you know, for me, what's sad is not sad. When you're in high school, you have to watch these uh, can we say, kind of boring, just, you know, watching these documentary clips of these men get together and have all these debates. And um, I don't think it was exciting then, and it's not exciting now to watch. It was hot, and, um, you know, like many uh, uh, debates kind of in closed quarters, it's not going to be that exciting, but the, but the decisions that are made are highly relevant, right? And so that's what I really want to focus on. Um, and I think focusing on the events that led up to it and some of the results after are something I'd rather highlight, but we can't negate the importance of, and focus of this particular event by any means, okay? So you had 55 men from all states except Rhode Island. Um, uh, in the Philadelphia State House, September 1787. The average age was 44. Is that relevant? Um, <clears throat> no, but we do have, you know, uh, um, kind of men who are older and experienced and at the same time not that old. Okay, just shy of middle age. <clears throat> and then you have um, Benjamin Franklin, who was 81. He was definitely the older, the, the patriarch, if you will. And then you had Washington presiding over. And here he is kind of like this Moses figure, right, as I keep talking about. And Franklin there as well. Um, these two men had a lot of symbolic uh, um, power, or, or um, if, if that's the right word of, of, of using it, okay? Um, and so what happened? You essentially had bickering for weeks. Um, and Benjamin Franklin warned, he said, if they failed, they would become a reproach and byword of future ages. All right. It was understood that it was essential. Um, again, I'm emphasizing, you're taking a U.S. history class, United States. These are not United States. And here's a question that was really being posed. Can there be a United States of America? Um now, different states, just as now, have different sets of interests. And um, their histories created a certain set of conditions that um, made their interests different. So, right here we're going to see really a situation that's going to end up leading to our, our civil war. And now one could argue that the racial relations in America um, are really rooted back still again i mean the slavery topic was always a topic this is the thing that i always want to remind you you know you talk about people being a man of the times or whatever no slavery was always a controversial topic okay um it was abroad and it was here within our own leadership okay and by the way to make a side note not all the founding fathers had slaves um i, I can't even remember if, i might have said that or misstated mis misstated that Washington was the only one that freed his slaves out of the ones that did have slaves, okay? Um, 
Later, if I can, I'm going to try to find a chart to show you all the different um, founders, the ones that did and ones that didn't. Um, but uh, any case, okay. So southern states. Um, wanted slaves counted as a population to determine representation in the House of Representatives. And they were opposed to counting slaves for the purpose of determining taxation. Okay, so actually this gets to a heart of something else the issue is. Taxation, which is going to um, really boil over in the issue of the Whiskey Rebellion. Um, we're trying to create a state now. Uh, a functioning government. How do you have money for your military to support public institutions? You have to have taxes. How do you count or what do you count? count? If slaves are not considered citizens, then you can't count them as representation. But in the southern states, slaves counted for a huge part of the population and there was a much less white population and so they wanted them to count for something. The northern states opposed counting slaves as a population to determine representation um, in the House of Reps. That's not necessarily because they were making a statement against slaves. Um, they were also trying to use that as an excuse to support northern power, one could argue, at the expense of the South. Um, but, you know, I, to be honest, I haven't really did a research if there's any notes or, 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 or ideas of the arguments being made by northerners opposed to the doing this i mean for what their actual reasons were so that's something of interest that i'd actually like to explore more myself okay um now uh they favored counting slaves for the purpose of determining taxation though okay and this was going to keep this was just there was no um, way of resolving this until we had what they called the great compromise our or the controversial three-fifths compromise. So if you look in your constitution, an amendment, you could say, corrects this later on, but it's there. It's called the three-fifths compromise, where slaves were counted as population in determining representatives to the House of uh, um, Representation in the House of represent, Representatives only. So three-fifths of slaves could be counted for the purpose of determining also taxation so um imagine this in our constitution that basically saying that for every uh uh, uh five slaves they count as three human beings um it's quite insulting and and um for many black uh, americans it's still just kind of i mean you know i just i just kind of want to say something just to white to address i think for for white america um i noticed it's always easy to kind of try to marginalize or, or to say well you know you keep bringing up the slavery thing and you know yeah i mean white america didn't go through this okay if you're a black american every day when you see if you get your constitution even if you love the constitution it still is demeaning to you and we as white americans don't it doesn't do that for us i think that if we're going to be like we need to be honest with ourselves um on why that also still kind of creates that tension between white and black america um that we just need to i think acknowledge now that's my opinion that's my little take on things i'm going to move on now okay so the Constitution of 1787. We do get ourselves a Constitution. And here, um, much, much of it was contributed to by James Madison. Um, it solved the issue of sovereignty versus limiting power, the separation of powers, the checks and balances. These are all important things that we do, most of us find to be great. These are not things that are quite controversial, at least now. What's, what's controversial is how we implement them, and it was then as well, which we keep exploring um, as we'll even go into the Whiskey Rebellion. Um, you know, the idea of checks and balances. Uh, and then so September 17th, 1787, 39 delegates signed onto it. Benjamin Franklin said, Thus I consent, sir, to this Constitution, because I expect no better, and because I am not sure it is not the best. Um, 
quite a um, celebratory way of like really saying, job well done, guys. We did this. We made the compromise. We ratified this in 1788. We have ourselves really the beginning of the United States of America. Okay, there. And this is what uh, we're seeing this idea. But we had... Um, this battle over this is we had the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists that are going to be the challenge to these ideas and uh, in this debate. So I, I will get to that in the next lecture.